also have Mr. Bryce Packer Pro. To so come on out and celebrate David's here. We do have a few seats in here. So get friendly with your neighbors. You can have a seat. Enjoy for the next hour. You get to hang out with the stars of Demon Slayer. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks so much for being a part of the amazing Comic Con. Thank Aloha. You. Thank you for Thanks having, for us. having us. See, uh, my voice is shot, but you know what? That's your money makers. So uh, I'm sure the fans don't want to hear me. They want to hear you guys and see you guys. Thanks so much for being here. And thanks for all of you guys for supporting the amazing Comic Con and coming back. And uh, we're here. This is our kickoff. Thanks so much, guys. Did you hear that? He said we're the stars of Demon Slayer. <laughs> that's right. Oh, yeah. Maybe yeah, Dosuke yeah. doesn't go. I think that's uh, that's accurate for sure. Wow. Inosuke, Inosuke, Inosuke! Big boss Inosuke! Inosuke, Inosuke! <laughs> accurate, accurate. I tried to teach her dog to say Inosuke just like I'm that. It, it sounded exactly like yours just sounded, actually. Yeah, he's, she's getting very good. Yeah, talented dog. Um, <laughs> well, hi, everybody. Um, I actually came to Amazing Comic Con Hawaii seven years ago. Oh, wow. um, I was not Inosuke last time I was here, so I've been talking a lot since uh, I was on the island last. Um, I think a cool way to kind of like kick these off is to tell people about ourselves yeah. and how we got here. Yeah. Why don't you go first? Oh, me first? Yeah. How, how did you get up to this table? Uh, how did this happen, Abby? Good question, man. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> well, the way that I kind of found my way into voiceover, is that where we're starting? Sure, at the yeah, beginning? yeah. Uh, yeah, way back. I, I was a theater major. I wanted to do acting in some capacity and didn't know what to do with myself after I graduated college, so I applied to the JET program, and I moved to Japan for six years, like you do. Um, and then after the JET program, I did a couple years teaching English. Then I moved to Tokyo for four years to, to uh, get back to acting and music. And I got my first little taste of voiceover in Japan, doing some voices for these uh, children's shows that I was in that traveled around Japan. I got to voice some of their characters, and I really fell in love with VO specifically. And I realized that in order to do English voiceover, I should probably go back to the United States. So I moved back. I entered a contest online hosted by Bang Zoom Entertainment. That's the company that dubs Demon Slayer. Ever heard of it? Yeah. So I ended up winning this contest, which is insane. And in the meantime, I was taking voiceover classes. And uh, that's really kind of what kicked off my voiceover career because I won this contest saw that all the opportunities that I was looking for were out in LA, so I moved to LA, and I've been there ever since. Been working on things like Demon Slayer. I'm in Don to Don now as Momo. I'm really excited about that one, it's so fun. Um, other things, you might know me from Fire Emblem Three Houses. I'm Annette. I'm the singer for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, the theme song, Lifeline. Not a lot of people know that, so that's a fun little fact. Um, I'm tied to Kemi in Persona 5R. Um, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, I digress. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, I did not win a contest to get up here. What? It didn't happen. I know, I'm I sorry. thought that was the requirement. I, no. I wish I did. Um, I was actually born into a family of actors, and my dad was working on a show called Power Rangers, if you guys have seen that one. Uh, he played Rito Revolto, the skeleton dude, and a bunch of the monsters on the show. And uh, I used to love to watch him work. And at the end of one of his sessions, they needed a kid's voice, and he was like, He's a kid, throw him in the booth! And uh, that's how I got here. That kicked everything off. Never thought it would amount to where I'm at today. I actually uh, went to UCLA. I studied political science and philosophy, and it's a beautiful decoration on my wall. Um, so I'm asked all the time, like, how do I get into voice acting? Like, how does one do that? And there's not one answer. I've done a ton of these panels, and everyone literally has a different path that they take. So it's, you kind of create your own path into the industry. Um, the one thing that I think all of us share in common, though, is tenacity. Um, and when you come to these events, you very much see our success as actors, but what you don't see is the graveyard of auditions <laughs> that we were not casting. All the failure. Yes, and there is a lot. 
Uh, I tell people if you book one out of a hundred auditions, you're doing incredibly well. Um, so yeah, there are many that I've failed, but I feel like I've won the anime lottery. Um, being able to play characters like Aaron Yeager in Attack on Titan, Kirito in Sword Art Online, Cat Noir in Miraculous Ladybug. Love the cosplay so bug of you. <laughs> Um, and Wikipedia knows better than I do on what I've played, because, uh, yeah, I've been talking a lot. I've been talking a lot. Yeah, you have. But you didn't win the lottery, because to win the lottery, you don't need to have mad skills like you do, Bryce. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have tricks to do each character. Do you have, like, special things that you do before you go into the booth, or, like, specifically around playing a character like Nezuko? Is mm. there something that you do to kind of find the growl for Nezuko? Find the growl. Or, more recently, her speaking voice. Speaking voice. You know, Nezuko's really interesting because she has evolved so much over the course of these seasons, and, like, we saw her at the very beginning, and now, um, like, she was a human, she knew how to speak. Now that she is learning to speak again, she does sound different than when we started, right? It's kind of like a little babyish, right? A little learning to speak. Um, I don't, I don't have like a ritual for getting into it, but um, I just try to remind myself what's which phase of Nezuko we're in. Um, but I, yeah, I know that you have a pretty pretty good tradition. I, I do, yeah. I have something that I, I do pretty much every session, and that's uh, drink dark, disgusting coffee, like <laughs> black tar in a cup, the kind that's so bitter it makes you angry. So uh, with the Inosuke, I'm uh, angry and caffeinated. <laughs> um, so I take a sip of that coffee, and I'm just like, Ugh! Ah! and that's Inosuke! And I can scream like him all day long. Works he real can. well. I can attest. Yeah. <laughs> all day long, I just hear this maniacal laughter. Yeah, it doesn't stop. It's good times. It's good times. I highly recommend you all try this also. Yeah. Also, I think I want to put angry and caffeinated on a shirt. That's yes. a really good shirt idea. Yes. Somebody do that. Please do. I, I will take two. Uh, <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Angry and Caffeinated is a great band name. It also. is. Oh, it is. Let's we'll start a band right now. Love it. Angry and Caffeinated! I can't do metal. I'll just break all the instruments. It'll be great. It'll be great. <laughs> So, um, we can also take your questions. We yeah. can talk for an hour for sure and catch up. And we what? will if you don't ask any questions. That's true. Um, uh, another thing that you guys might not know, when we record on anime, we're not together. So Abby and I don't get to hang out all the time. Really, we see each other at conventions. Yep. Um, so it's awesome to be able to catch up when we're at these events. So, when you watch those shows, if it sounds like the characters are talking to each other, then we're doing a good job. Uh, so yeah, I mean, when you're working on them, on these shows, you're watching the screen, your characters are moving on screen and talking on screen, and you try to talk as they move their mouth. So it doesn't look like the old Godzilla, like you don't want like, oh. Um, try to get it to match the lip flaps. With Inosuke, it's a lot easier for me because he's wearing the boar head, so I just have to hit snout movement. So I have a lot more freedom to really have fun with the character, and I definitely do. Um, I break the rules all the time. I know I'm not supposed to do that. Yeah, you're uh, not supposed to do that. Right? <laughs> I don't care. Um, th there's a moment in the show where Inosuke is kind of leaning into frame and uh, that one character, Manjaro, or whatever his name is, he's on a, a hospital bed sleeping, and Inosuke is kind of leaning in towards him and breathing really loudly. Um, I see some nods. <laughs> we know this reference. I love it. I love it. So he just leans forward and goes, as he kind of gets closer to him. And Steve, our director, was like, Hey, Bryce, that was hilarious, but like, could we get a shorter one? Because we need something shorter. I'm like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Give him a longer one. He's like, you're not going to do it shorter, are you? I'm like, nope. <laughs> and they put it in the show. And he gets away with it because he's Bryce. Yes. 
Uh, you know, I didn't have to match lip flaps for a while either, so... That's true. Yeah, a lot of my sessions were like this. That's how it, that's how it went down. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anytime we can escape the lip flap restrictions, that's a, <laughs> it's a win. Fantastic. That's a win. It's fantastic. So, anybody have any questions about Demon Slayer, about other things? I don't know if we have a mic to pass around. We no. do. Oh, we do. We do. Yes. So, yes. if you have a question, raise your hand and a mic might appear. You know, another thing, we're also not as angry as the characters we play, so you don't have to worry. Hey, speak for yourself. Yeah, uh, that's true. Um, hi, I was just wondering, uh, what was your favorite thing to record on the show? On Ooh. a show? Any show? Any show, yeah. Any, any show, show ever? Any Whoa. show ever, favorite moment, go! Oh my god, I have so many, but yeah. one of my favorite characters, who's played Bug, bug Snacks? A few people, okay. So, I voice a few of the Bug Snacks, but my favorite Bug Snack is Ribblebead. Ribblebead is a living rack of ribs. It crawls around in a cave, and it's really gross. And I, in this session, so we didn't know what the bug snacks were gonna sound like going into the session, so it was super fun because I got to the session and I saw this art for the, the character, and they're like, what do you think that would sound like? And so for Ribblepeed, uh, my Ribblepeed sounds like this. Ribblepeed, Ribblepeed, and uh, that was one of the most fun sessions of my life because I got to be a gross little rack of ribs and I had a super good time. So, you never know what you're going to be you when you know. step in the booth. It's the most fun. Uh, I have a really hard time narrowing it down to just one moment. I, I feel like there's been so many incredible uh, sessions that I've had. Um, I think you can tell how much fun I'm having in the booth when you see the bloopers that are released. Uh, and there are some dirty Sword Art Online bloopers. Don't look them up, kids. Um, they're fantastic. Um, I, I, I don't know. Um, I always answer like favorite moment with like so many examples of incredible moments. Um, I mean, I've been part of shows like Sword Art Online and Blue Exorcist and Attack on Titan for a decade. Um, longer than a decade for Sword Art and Blue Exorcist. And Demon Slayer, how long has it been? Five years. Five and a half years. Five now. and a half years. Um, time has just flown by. Um, and it's so cool to kind of connect yourself to the characters in the show, watch all of these other actors do really incredible performances and then go to events like these and kind of relive those moments with the people that you were there with them but not really. Um, I think from Demon Slayer, one of my favorite memories is watching Mugen Train in the theaters. Because um, I could kind of hear everyone around me crying during the movie. And then Inosuke shows up and everyone's laughing again. So it was just really, really cool. Um, when I recorded that movie, uh, it was right in the middle of the pandemic. And the fastest way to build a studio in the pandemic is in your closet. So that was me screaming and crying in my closet. Uh, good times. <laughs> Did you know what was going to happen at the end of Mugen Train? Yeah, you do, because you know Skate's there for that. Only when I saw it during the recording. Okay. Yes. Because I didn't know. Oh! Because Nezuko is not in the end there when all of the things are going down. Who's seen Mugen Train? I'm just like, okay, most people. So, if you guys know, there's a very tragic end, and when I was dubbing the gun train, I had just set up a booth in my garage, so I like, there, I borrowed a booth from somebody during the pandemic, yeah. and I recorded it from home, and I only saw the parts that Nezuko was in, so I dubbed like, the fight on the train, the dream sequences, you know, this case is hilarious. Uh, so much fun. But I did not know what happened at the end until I saw it in theaters. I was like, oh. I just, I just fell in love with Rengoku. How could you do this to me? Yeah, it was, it was a rough one. 
Yeah, we don't get scripts ahead of time either. So it's not like, even if we wanted to, we could be like, okay, well, what's gonna happen here at the end? The first time we say the words is right there in the moment. Mm. Keeps yeah. it pretty fun. And then when you watch the show back in English, it's like, it's the first time you've seen it. Yeah, yeah. We got a question, we got a question. So do you think that if you haven't read the manga, which I remember- I haven't, are, yeah. don't tell me anything. No, 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 because I haven't either on purpose. Um, do you think that helps you with your voice acting to kind of know what kind of what, and you kind of maybe know what the story may be at the end, but it helps you with your performance if you haven't run, read the script, in the, like the, the characters' conversations in the manga? Yes. Mm. I, I kind of see it both ways. So there is an advantage to not knowing what's coming. It kind of puts you very much in the moment with the character um, without, you know, if you know what's coming without trying to overthink or, you know, change the character in any way preemptively to know, to adjust for what's coming. It, it keeps you really in the moment. But then there are certain roles that, like, like for me, uh, Don to Don right now, like, I need to know what's going to happen. I need to know what's happening. Um, and I think reading the manga definitely helped inform the character of Momo because the more I read of her, the more I get a, an overall taste of her her personality because she has a lot of different things going on. She's a very complex character and if you only get Momo from you know little bits and pieces, you might think she's a certain way. So reading the manga has helped me get a fuller, a fuller picture of her. Uh, what do you think? Do you have a preference? Yeah, the, the other thing that you don't see is we're not by ourselves in like a void. Like there's a team with us. There's always engineers, there's directors, uh, and a lot of times there's producers from the companies that are like experts in the show. So what I really enjoy doing is just learning what I need to know in the moment. So another show that I didn't know anything about until the very, very end was Attack on Titan. Um, I actually met Isayama Sensei, the mangaka and creator of the show, uh, right in the middle of season four. And I told him I hadn't read the manga. Uh, he mentioned that there were a few Seiyu in Japan that had not read the manga. Um, who's seen Attack on Titan, by the way, all the way to the end? Who's still watching the show? Okay, I'm not going to spoil it. Like like who's never seen Attack on Titan? Awesome. It's like a lighthearted comedy. <laughs> watch it on a day and you'd like to be uh, lies. Um, so I, I told Isayama Sensei I, I hadn't read the manga and his response was, Aaron knows more than you. Uh, which I found out was very, very true. It's like the best response you can give to someone at that point in the story. Um, fortunately for me, Mike McFarlane, the director of the show and the voice of Jean, studied that manga. He studied the world. He knew so much about the story. And any time I needed to understand something, he would give me just a little nugget of something, just enough to understand what I needed to do for Aaron in that moment. So um, there's a scene with Mikasa and Armin where they're sitting at a table. Aaron's very, very intense. He shakes his hand like this. Um, do you remember that scene? Uh, he says some really mean things. I mean, there's a reason he's saying all of those things, which I won't tell you. But all Mike told me was, make this hurt. I want, I want this to hurt who you're talking to. And I didn't know why I wanted him to hurt them, but I tried to make it hurt. So delivered those lines in that moment, both Mike and I were like, oh! But now I understand why it should have hurt so bad in that moment. So. I, I prefer to kind of work that way, and that's exactly what I'm doing with Inosuke and Demon Slayer, and why I'm always asking people, have you read the manga? And whenever someone's like, yeah, I'm like, don't talk to me. Um, don't talk to me, go, leave. Yeah, hey, okay, no more, no more, that's it. So yeah, but both ways have their advantages. Got a question back here. Give you a workout. All right, Mr. Pappenbrook, Rino Kumara and Inosuke fighting over the last piece of cake. Who's got it? <laughs> Rino Kumara and Inosuke are fighting over the last piece of cake? Oh, no. First off, that cake is not going to make it very far. Um, 
I feel like it, it depends on the day, right? It, any day for Inosuke, he's going for that cake. He's gonna eat that. Rin might be in a good mood and be like, I can cook a better cake than that anyways, because he's a great chef. I want to eat his food. I don't want to eat Inosuke's food. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like Rin would give him the cake and then immediately set him on fire. <laughs> Um, what's your favorite one of Inosuke's moves? Oh, he has some good ones. Um, like, of the beast breathing specifically? Just like headbutting people. Yeah, head, my the, favorite. the headbutting of trees is my favorite. It's him in the background. Like, ah! Are you Crashing okay? trees. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think my, my favorite beast breathing, I don't know why I like this one, but I like beast breathing. Yes. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Nezuko attack? Uh, probably Black Demon Heart. Heart. Exploding Blood! It's a good this one. This one is pretty right. Ooh, that kind of echoed. That was I cool. know. I like it. I, I like when she just kicks people's like heads off. Yeah. That doesn't... I think in that moment she's, she is not speaking, right? So yeah. it's just a... <laughs> That's it. <laughs> a head flying around. And head is gone. Head is gone. Right. Do you have any more questions? Raise your hands if you have right questions. Now? We got one over here. Can you try to voice act red? Yeah, thank you for asking. I was like, if you come to the panel and ask me to say a line as red, <laughs> I will say it. Um, so, uh, I, I was lucky enough to be part of a show called Pokemon Origins. I play Red, which is the trainer that came before Ash. My complaint about him is he's too good of a trainer. Caught all the Pokemon in four episodes. I wanted like <laughs> 25 years. Like, Ash, yeah, that's yeah. Not yeah. Um, I mean, I, I was losing my mind when I got to go, Charizard, go! Like, yeah, that's so cool. fun. That's cool as heck. I know. really hope they bring him back. Do you, do you have a favorite Pokemon? Ooh, um, I mean, I picked Charmander when I when I played Pokemon Red yeah, as a kid. Yeah. Oh, who is your favorite Pokemon? I know you. You. Uh, I have a favorite. Have quite a collection. I do. Uh, my favorite is Larvitar. Do you guys know Larvitar? Yeah. He eventually evolves into Ty Ty Tyranitar, but I'll never evolve my Larvitar because he's perfect just the way he is. He's so cute. I love him because he like thinks he's a tough guy, but he's just a little nugget. <laughs> a little nugget. And I have a huge collection of Larvitar stuff, so if you guys ever want to like draw me a Larvitar and just give it to me, that would be great. Thanks. <laughs> That'd be great. We got some questions. What's your like most ridiculous role you had to play? I feel like I mentioned it earlier. The <laughs> living rack of ribs is crazy. Come on, Abby, you it up more I than a some, rack I of ribs. You, you, go, you go, let me think of something else. Um, yeah, you, you kind of never know what you're gonna do when you step in the booth. Um, I, I also feel like I'm mostly known for anime and video game work, but I've done all sorts of things as an actor. I've done commercial work, uh, radio spots, audio books, and I've also done a good amount of work in what's called Walla. Do you know what Walla is? Anyone know what Walla is? You know what Walla is? Perfect. So he said additional dialogue, it's like background noise. So if you listen to where we are, sounds like we're at a convention. Well, if they were filming us, they wouldn't be able to properly capture that background noise. So they bring in a group of actors to recreate it. We're just in a room talking to each other and creating like the sound of a convention. Um, well, I've done... Uh, they don't usually let us touch these mics. Um, I've done a good amount of that type of work, so like, I'm Pennywise. I'm part of Pennywise's voice in It. Uh, I'm also some of Bruce Wayne's breathing in Gotham. So like, he jumps over a fence and I go, <laughs> and that's it. Uh, so I'm in a ton of different movies from Disney to like, uh, CSI New York, like doing all sorts of like background stuff. Um, I worked on a movie called Warm Bodies a long time ago. 
Uh, it's like a zombie movie, but the zombies are kind of friendly. So for eight hours, for multiple days, eight hours a day, we walked in circles going like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Oh, that's fun. I was a zombie too. You were? With the Walking Dead kind. Uh, yeah, so that session was another, like, we're walking around in circles, but we're going... <sighs> and the gross, you know, that kind of like, some of them are dry, some of them are wet zombie, like, yeah. there's, a, there's a good mix in there. Yeah, those are always fun when you get to be... Something gross. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It's good times. <laughs> yeah, gross stuff is fun. Do you share any similarities with your characters? Specifically in Demon Slayer? Mm -hmm. oh. Good question. How similar are you to Nezuko? I think I am similar to Nezuko in that Nezuko, when she's a human and when she's really is a she cares a lot about her family and loved ones like she would do anything to protect them and like I can relate to that um, I also like how she can kick a demon's head off and I think given the opportunity I think I could crush that but I agree yeah. I don't know um, I, I think I'm very different from Inosuke um, <laughs> probably a little more laid back than him maybe a little bit uh, I, I think I, I'm kind of similar to him as a driver <laughs> in traffic. That's where I get my vocal warm-ups also. Uh, another thing that you guys should definitely try. The traffic here was surprisingly bad. Um, so here's what you gotta do. Uh, get in your car, get bumper to bumper, make eye contact with another driver, and just laugh like you know skin. <laughs> Watch them score and try to get away from them. It works really well in LA, so I assume it would work great here too. I'm imagining that, and I, I'm imagining the version where the window is rolled down, and I'm also imagining a kind of creepier version where the windows are up, and you can just hear this muffled, <laughs> maniacal laughter. It works both ways. Works both ways. Um, my favorite is doing it when people have Inosuke stickers on their car. Oh, yeah. Like there's one like Inosuke like peering over the window. I always try to do it to those cars and they always get freaked out the most. Like they don't realize they have Inosuke screaming at them and on their window. And they're like, it's another crazy person yelling. <laughs> Have you ever been arrested for that, or...? <laughs> I usually don't do it to police officers. I try not to. Hi. Oh, what has been, for both of you, the most challenging character you have ever voiced, and why? Challenging character... Yeah, this is a tough one, because I think these types of characters can be challenging in many different ways. So, um, for me, I have a lot of characters who scream. You know, Aaron Yeager speaks and screaming. Kirito speaks and screaming. Inosuke speaks and screaming. Pretty much everyone I play speaks and screaming. So there's like that type of challenge. There's also emotional challenges where your character is going through something really, really challenging and tough and deep. And um, my method is to try to feel what my characters are feeling. Um, so playing characters like Meliodas, Aaron, and Kirito, uh, I mean, really tough sessions where I would record and you only live with the character for a very short time, but you leave the booth and you're still just like feeling all that emotion. Um, with Aaron specifically, I, I had a session where I left and I felt pretty beat up for like a week after. And it wasn't until, similarly in the show, Trina, who plays Mikasa, kind of pulled me out of my funk and got me back to normal that I felt like myself again. Um, so sometimes there's those challenges. Then there's also technical challenges, where like you're in the booth and you're watching and the character's lip flaps are so weird and funky, or the writing is just not quite there, and you have to kind of adapt and change to match the flaps well. So, to pick one is really, really tough. It is really tough. Um, definitely the vocal stress is, is it's rough. Like, Nezuko is hard sometimes when she's fighting because the growling is horrible for your voice. So it's like, you, 
you have to do vocal rest and really take care of yourself when you do these challenging sessions. Another one of those would be Carly from Back for Blood. A lot of yelling in Back for Blood because you're being chased by horrible monsters and screaming and, you know, dying. So there's that. Um, I did I did have, um, I'm blanking on the name of the game, I played this character, Lydusa, who is, um, uh, this character was like a very dramatic and tragic character. That one was particularly challenging because it was, she's, she's dramatic, but you have to keep it grounded and realistic, even though it's a fantasy. And, you know, there are all these elements to it. So that can be challenging when, the, when a character has all of these layers and you can't see the game. Like, the game isn't made yet for you to really get the environment, so it's a, the director helps a lot in these moments when you're trying to find the balance of what that character should be. So that, that, that's another kind of challenge, I think. I think one more that you don't see, and I mentioned this earlier, is actually getting the work. Like, when you receive these auditions, um, a lot of times, I don't think the casting directors know what they're looking for. Because the descriptions I get are like, boy, 16. Like, that could be anything. Like, I don't know what to do for that. Um, so I, I feel like it's shooting darts at a dartboard blindfolded, uh, and you just keep taking shots and hope you hit something. Um, what I've started doing is just submitting things that I like, even if I'm not following directions. Um, like one example of that is Caesar Zeppeli in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I'm, the, different voice actors have different skills. I am not a great um, person at, that can do good accents. I don't do that well. Um, I haven't put the time in to really narrow down where my characters are from and like really nail all the nuance of a specific accent. Um, so when they were looking for an Italian accent, uh, the, the best thing I could do that day was what I saw in Family Guy. Uh, Peter does this really bad, like, boop, ba -da -ba, ba -da -bee -ba. and I did that, and they're like, this guy! So, you know, sometimes you just do things that make you laugh or that you like, and it kind of works. Yeah, speaking of the accent thing, that is another challenging aspect of voiceover. So, yeah, this year, I went to New Zealand earlier in the year, and I came back, and the day after I got back from New Zealand, I recorded Leatherhead for the new Turtles game that's out. As you know, Leatherhead has an Australian accent, which is different from a New Zealand accent. So that was really challenging. Because you've just been Oh my gosh, New all I can hear, yeah, yeah. So that could be tricky. Anyway, next question. Favorite Hashira, and what is your favorite line from them? Oh, that's a hard one. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go the easy route though. Rengoku and Tasty. <laughs> that was my best with Mark Whitten. That was great. That was great. Uh, we were both with Mark. Was that last weekend? Was it last? Weekend? It was last weekend. It seems like wow. so long ago. Time flies. Um, but he was next to you, yeah. and I could hear Tasty over the whole convention, like the whole time. It was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I, I too uh, like Rengoku and Tasty. Do you guys know like why he does that? Well, at any point in Ahashira's life, it could be their last meal. So they need to enjoy every single moment and every meal. So all the food is delicious to him, which is so deep. Yeah. As a philosophy major, yeah. <laughs> how do you feel about that? <laughs> I love it. When yeah. I found that out, I was like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. We would have like a samurai mentality of like at any moment it could be your last, which is so, so nice. Cool. Any other questions? Did you guys try to voice, yeah, voice each other? Can we voice each other's yeah, characters? Oh, yeah. Do you, have, do you have a script for us? I'm already off script. <laughs> no. Dad? Bryce is going to steal my job. <laughs> okay, here's my nose camera. <laughs> I love it. I'm not coming for your job anytime soon. Well, 
when you auditioned for Demon Slayer, yes. did you audition for only Nezuko, or did you read for other characters? Only Nezuko, because I believe they were casting the main four initially, so I think the sides for Tanjiro, sides being the audition script that you receive when you're doing an audition, the sides for Tanjiro, Nezuko, Inosuke, Zenitsu went out at the same time. So they wanted to get those four out of the way, so I only read for Nezuko because I ended up booking that job and I was so excited when I did because I just heard about Demon Slayer like two weeks before I got these auditions and I was really excited to watch the anime because everyone was hyping it up on Twitter and I was, I was just like, oh, what is this show? What is this manga? It looks really cool. I can't wait to watch it. And then I got the sides and I was like, oh, I know what this is. I received the sides and I started binging the show immediately. There were only a few episodes out uh, streaming when we got them, so I couldn't watch too far. Not far enough to see Inosuke. So I read for Inosuke and Majuro, whatever his name is. Um, and yeah, I think the casting directors chose right. Um, Inosuke just seems so different from the type of characters I play. Uh, in the past, but when I heard a sample of Matsuoka-san, who's the seiyu uh, in Japanese for Inosuke, I was like, this voice sounds so familiar, because he also plays Kirito. Um, and it was so cool to hear a very different take coming from Matsuoka-san, and to put my own spin on it. So, I think the casting was right. Yeah, yeah, really good casting. Anybody have any other questions? Going over here. Give like, advice to your younger self. What would it be? I didn't catch that. Uh, give advice to our younger selves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you could give some advice to uh, a younger so Abby. Many things. Um, I would say to not be so hard on myself because I'm still trying to work on that, but it, it, it's a thing where like you are your worst critic, you know. Especially when it's when it's something to do with the arts for me, like creating something, you know, a bit of a perfectionist, and you just have to let it go, and like nothing is ever going to be perfect, and you're not perfect, and that's okay. Actually, that's good. We don't want things to be perfect because that's boring. We want things to be weird and interesting, and like you are yourself, and that is great, and that is enough. So that's what I would say to poor baby Abby who is struggling. Struggling. Uh, I just tell younger me, uh, prepare to scream. <laughs> That's it. Just leave that out there. Prepare just to, to give myself a heads up. And your, for younger, what was your younger self would be like, why though? <laughs> uh, <laughs> more details around why I'm screaming. Something coming for me. Uh, <laughs> nope. Thanks, older Bryce, for that. <laughs> Appreciate that advice. Do you have a favorite character? I don't have one favorite, but a few of them would be... So, I love Annette from Fire Emblem. She sings weird little songs. I'm very similar to her in real life. I love Ivy from Carmen Sandiego. The Netflix Carmen Sandiego, because I got to speak with a Boston accent, and it was <laughs> wicked awesome, bro. Um, I love Momo from Don Da Don, because... If you have seen Don Da Don, she speaks, it speaks for itself. It's just, she's so fun. She's so different from me in that she says all the things I could never say. And yeah, she's, she's great. She's so much fun. Picking a favorite is really, really difficult. I, I get this question all the time. And um, you work so hard to get cast as your characters. They all become like a part of you, like your kids that live in your head. And a lot of my kids are crazy and I don't want to make them mad. So uh, yeah, I just don't pick a favorite. I stay out of that conversation. Next question. Uh, aloha to you both. Um, welcome Abby and welcome back Bryce. Thanks. Um, Bryce, I wanted to say, um, uh, so when they announced the new dubs of the old Digimon movies, um, I was really excited to see both that they tried to get as many of the old actors back as possible, and then in one case where that wasn't possible, your father, Bob Papenbrook, you were able to step into that role, which I thought was just amazing. I wanted to know if, if, if you're willing to talk about it, uh, 
what, if you could talk a bit about the influence that your father had on your craft and, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I mentioned my start in voice acting was because of my dad. I don't think I would have been successful in voice acting if it wasn't for him. Um, really, my motivation coming out of college to put my head down and work as hard as I could was to carry on the torch for him. Uh, and to play Red Greymon in Digimon was the literal manifestation of that. Um, you know, my, my dad was a very different person than me, uh, literally much bigger than me. His voice was deep and booming, like he would shake a room that he walked into. And mine hasn't changed since middle school. Um, so I'm a much smaller version of Red Greymon, which I think the engineers will help me out. It's my best impression uh, of, of what he did in the, in the film. Um, but it was really thoughtful casting. You know, we, we as actors, um, we're just out there trying to get as much work as we can and be part of as many cool projects as possible. Um, and, um, you know, to be able to literally carry on a role for my pops was the coolest thing ever. It's just an honor to be able to do it. Um, so yeah, I'm just very grateful that I had that opportunity. Um, and I, I, I'm really proud of the work I've done over the last, uh, wow, 16, 17 years. I've lost track of how long it's been since my pops passed. Um, just to, to carry on the torch for him. Uh, if you ever read my bio when I go to conventions, I mention him right at the beginning. Um, so I've done hundreds of events now, and it's cool to see, like, just keeping his name alive. Yeah, thanks for thinking of me. It's awesome. Now that you pour your heart out, um, what was it like working on Dong and Wampa? <laughs> Ooh. Um, such an awesome series, uh, and I'm the only actor that's in every iteration of Dawn Rope. All the games, all the anime, super high school level luck is why. Um, working on the first game, like I, I mentioned, we don't get scripts. You have no idea what's going to happen, and Dawn Rope is a murder game. So like, you don't know who's going to die next. You don't know who killed them. And I was like solving these murders with Nagi. It was so fun. Uh, and then Nagito's insane, so that was awesome too. Um, so yeah, I mean, just such a cool experience, and it's so amazing that people still love the series after all these years. All right, guys, can we do one more question? Yes, That's great. All right, I lost you know all track of time. <laughs> I told you, I'm like, there's a good chance we'll talk way too much. You know what? What is cool is that we do have a lot of anime panels throughout the weekend. Um, but this is a really great chance, of course, that everybody gets this, you know, really up close and personal hangout session with you guys. But we're going to do one more question. Sounds it's going to be, uh, it's going to be this condor. Here you go. Um, so, which voice actor are you closest with on the Demon Slayer show? Closest one? Yeah. That's do a tricky question. Do you like a closest friend in you know, the cast? I hung out with Alex Lee probably more than everyone else in the cast. Mostly because he just shows up sometimes at your house. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say maybe Alex for that reason, just because I've seen him more more in person, like out of the booth, out of conventions, and he's like probably the the closest. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I think Demon Slayer was really the first opportunity I had to hang out with you and Alex and Zach, mm -hmm. like ongoing and it's so fun to just kind of like grow as friends as the show continues so i don't know i don't know if i can narrow it down to like it's one really person. hard to choose a person yeah, yeah. it kind of changes like as the show like ebbs and flows i i did see alex a few weeks ago and he does show up at people's houses um <laughs> he he requested to go buy a chicken hat randomly i don't know that's just alex yeah that's just Alex. It's just Alex. Rock on, guys. I really appreciate you spending this time hanging out with all the fans of Hawaii. Now, you guys are going to be uh, hanging out throughout the weekend uh, this afternoon as well as tomorrow in the autograph section. Is that correct? Absolutely. We're right over there. If we didn't answer your question, 
please come by and ask it. And um, yeah, happy yeah. to uh, respond and stream it, you guys. And you have a limited edition prints. You have uh, you can sign Funko Pops, all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah. Absolutely, bring all the stuff. Bring all the stuff. That's part about being at a convention. Well, guys, thanks so much for being here, and um, we'll see you throughout the week. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thank you.